Hey guys, your gamer 34 here. So I have a cool thing that I want to show you that I built in Logism, and then I'm going to be building Minecraft very shortly. And it's a rehash of something that New Master made a long time ago, but I figured I'd take the time to explain and show you something that's not in Minecraft first. So the way I'm going to do this is, I'm go first. Let, let me tell you what this is. This is going to be a serial stream of binary converted into BCD without any combinational logic in between. It's going to try to take place all in serial logic, uh, streaming bits in and operating on bits as they stream in, rather than streaming bits in, locking them into a register, doing it combinationally, and then getting our result. So first I want to show you that this line right here that you see is the orange, has a 1-bit probe and it has a 8-bit probe. And it's telling you that there's an error here. This is 1-bit and this is 8, it's saying. So there's an error. So I want to show you that I'm really only streaming 1-bit at a time here to get these numbers. Um, so the moment I disconnect this, we're good. So 1-bit probe works. So I'm going to get rid of uh, that. Okay, so let me go to this little hand tool and we're going to first demonstrate what this does. So let's put in First off, everybody knows that all ones is going to be 255. So I didn't set up a locking register to save the state before anything. So like it'll just display one if you have any any an odd input plugged in. But if you have an even input plugged in, you won't. Well, right now it is, I guess. Oh, because it's taking the seventh. There we go. No, it's not the odd. It's the most significant bit. Sorry. Oh no, yeah, that's it's the least significant bit. These the, so the Indian is swapped here. Anyway, spiel over, let's run this. So this should output 255. So here's, this little thing here is the clock. So I'm going to reset this and clock it and update it so that you know that it's reset and the clock is telling it to reset and so it's reset. And so the keyboard shortcut is control K and I'm simulating this at 4.1 kilohertz. So this is going to be instant. So here I turn on the clock, nothing happens because the reset line is high. The moment I let go of this, you're going to see 255. That got streamed one bit at a time. Okay, so let's slow it down and let's examine what happens. So I reset the clock, or reset that. I'm going to go to simulate, tick frequency, and instead of being at that high of a speed, we're gonna slow it down and say eight hertz. So look, now we can clearly see this thing flashing. It's not being buggy. And now when I let go of this reset line, you're going to see numbers shifting through this and outputting onto here. And here we go. And there was 255. So I'll slow it down one more time so we can get an even better look. We'll do this at 2 hertz. So this is going to be unbearably slow. 3, 7, 15, 31, 63, 127, 255. There we go. Okay, let's try some other numbers. So we'll go with some, just click some random digits, see what, what it'll create. It goes 2, 5, 10, 21, 42, 85. 171, and that's our result there. Pretty easy. So if I reset this again, and let's do, let's do every other bit like this. And stream it in. And so follow th what's going on here. We see it clocking around, moving around, and it's done. So this number, it didn't even need to go into the third digit over there. So now I'd like to explain how this works. The first step to explaining how this works is understanding what goes on right, whoops, right, right here, this box here. So this is our 8-bit value. It comes in and our high bit is here, is 7. But it, it flips, it, t it thinks it's low bit is here. So we had to flip our bits here. We basically reversed every bit and said the high endian is now the low endian and low endian is now the high endian. And we put that into the mux. The mux then always, uh, this is always pulled to high to always enable the mux. We don't need to disable it. We need it always to stream in our values. And then, oh, I mean, I guess I could tie that, I could tie it to the knot of reset, I guess. I, I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, it's just easier to tie it to one right there and then always have this one output. Um, right here is a 4-bit control line. So if I go back to my probe here, click this. Oh, sorry, it's a 3-bit control line. 
And it thinks the value is negative one because it's signed, but it's actually just the value seven, right? There's zero through seven. So zero is here that it reads, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then here it thinks it's reverse where it streams it in. Anyway, what this is, is it's a three bit program counter. That's why there's three bits of data coming into the mux. And it basically increments through each one. So I basically say, pick the first one, pick the second one, pick the third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, and and then eighth bit, and then you're done sending them. So I only want to send the bits that I have. So this, what this does is it says when it gets to seven, it sends out this thing saying, I'm at seven. So if I reset this here, you'll see that it no longer cares that it's at seven. So this is the, this is the system that enables it when it gets to the top to send out a flag saying, hey, I'm at the top. This right here is going to be the enable. It's saying just a, a count up, basically. This right here is the clock for the program counter. And then here is the reset, so I could force it to zero. That's what the little zero means. Um, so you can see, if I manually clock it, that clock comes through. This is a not gate bubbled to an and, an and gate. So we have an implies gate here, which is basically saying, do the clock signal unless this is on. So we clock, we clock, oops, and we can keep clocking. It hit seven, this came on, and it stops allowing us the clock to come through. So we reset back to zero. Okay, so that's what this does. It streams one bit of here out of here at a time. So now let's pay attention to this probe as I clock through it. So oh it's a one, now it's a zero. Now it's a now it's a one, now it's a zero. One, zero, one, zero. Well, it gets stuck at one because it ends at one here. Right? So it, it did zero one zero one zero one zero one. And that's what we're stuck at. And then what it does is now we have to come and understand these blocks which are a little bit more complicated. Okay, to understand these blocks, we're gonna zoom in here. And now this looks like a lot. And I don't need that pull down resistor, so I'll get rid of that right there. Okay. So basically what happens is we get an input up here and an output down here. So input is this, output is this. And the reason it's designed like this is so when it gets compacted down into its own own subcomponent, the inputs and outputs were where I needed them. Um, so I p have put these pull down resistors on all of these lines here, just in case they accidentally want to go high uh, when they're floating, if they ever go floating, because it's streaming in data and I don't want it to ever go floating if there's some inconsistency, so I just pulled them to zero. The first bit gets pulled in though from the output of the last one, which is pulled to zero, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so that's why you don't bother needing to pull the first one down. Anyway, so we have four bits coming in. That gets condensed down to a, four, a single wire that has four bits on it. So if I click my tool here, you'll see it's telling me that I have the value five on this wire. Um, this mux is not actually necessary. It could have been an AND gate, but uh, actually, this logic isn't even hooked up right now. That's why it's yeah. Um, let me get rid of this. It's, the mux has both those same inputs. It basically means just do this. Okay, this will make things a little compli less complicated. Okay. Here we go. I hope the circuit's a little bit easier to look at and a lot less complicated now. Okay, so we have registers here. These are actually just D flip flops, but they're arranged as a 4 bit register. And then basically, we can clock the register and we can reset it, and then the data that comes in either gets reset or gets clocked in, right? And so this is what prevents us from continuously being in a loop when it's fed one through bit through the other, is we tell it when to update with a clock signal every certain amount of time. And then we say, okay, open up the D flip flop, close the D flip flop, open it and de close it. And the mechanics of logism take care of all the timings with the, the waveform that it uses to open and close those latches. So what this does is the four bit value here, if I go back to my first, let's fix this. You see everything goes high, let me connect that. 
Okay, so let's go back to this, and you see that we have a 4-bit value here, and that is the value 5. This is the value 0, we don't need to, 0 goes to 0, so that you don't need to encode it, like, duh. And then, so this is the 1 line, which encodes to 1. So this is the most significant bit, and this is the least significant bit here. This is the least significant bit, and this is the most significant bit, or 8. So this is an encoder, so it says take 1, encode it to 1, take the value 2 here, encode it to 2. Take the value 3 here, go to 3, 4 goes to 4, okay, 5 is greater than 4, so we have to add 3 to it to do double dabble. So 5 here on the decoder goes to the value 8, okay, so 6 should go to 9, nice, Ten, uh, uh, 7 should go to 10, 8 should go to 11, and 9 should go to 12. And that's how we convert values. So this is literally just raw double dabble right here. And it just latches into a cell. Okay, so let's look back out for a second. And now input up at the top, output down at the bottom. The first input comes into here and in. It doesn't get streamed in like this one came in from here. Well, it does get streamed in, but it comes straight from the mux. So that comes in. So let's, let's uh, clock through. Let's reset this. bring the clock low and let's put in the value 21 or let's put in the value 15 actually so let's see how 15 gets to converted into 1 and then 5 so we clock it clock it clock it clock it there's the one so the one comes in let's look inside of our circuit here the one comes in gets, you'll see right here is the value 1 on this line, if I can check its state, oh, yeah, there we go, that's the value 1 on that line, and then it comes to this right here, which is 1, which encodes to 1, but it's not outputting anything right now, because we haven't clocked this flip-flop. So when we go back to the main, then we click the clock button, now you'll see that the 1 has been clocked in and is outputting now. But now we don't have that 1 anymore on the input, we have a 3 coming through. And that 3 is being decoded here, and it's saying, no, 3 is not greater than 4, so we're going to output 3. And then it's being ready to be written into those registers again. So we go back out, then we clock it. Now you'll see that we have a 7. Well, 7 is definitely greater than 4, so what are we going to do? Well, let's look inside here. We see that we have a 7 coming in through the top here, we check the line, we have a 7. Check over here, 7 comes through, 7 plus 3 is 10, and it outputs 10 right here, like that. But we still have the 3 from before. Come on. There we go. Um, then I clock it in one more time. That 1 has shifted over. Oops, clicked on the wrong thing. I need to click on this. Sorry. So, we have this, the 10 that came through is clocked in right here. So we have 1010, one, zero, which is value 10. And now we're telling it that we need the value 8 written in there because it's coming to here. You'll see that here we have the value 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. So we encode 8. So we go back and we see that that 1 that came out of here really comes over to here, outputs, and then is the one that goes to this. And then you'll see that we're at our max value on our counter here, so we can't we can't clock anymore. <clears throat> so th the reason I needed to reverse these bits is so it took, so it stopped the counter at the right place, so that I could have my least significant bits on the right side like a normal human. Because if I were to write the number, if I were to write a number like this into the BCD disc screen, and, uh, Let's reset it. And let's say I was clocked this in eight times. All right? You would read this number as 255, with the least significant digit being here and the most significant digit being here. Value 200 is much greater than the value 5. So we want the same thing to be in our binary system, where the value on the right is much less significant than the value on the left. And so you see, by the system of reversing the bits here, we call from the most significant bits first by starting up here and then coming down. And so that's why the system works the way it is. And then of course this bit was borrowed from my previous video where I just built 
you know, the seven sec encoder. Um, and so I will be showing you guys how to build this in Minecraft once I actually build it in Minecraft. I just wanted to show you that it is possible to do and it doesn't take some sort of genius to figure this stuff out. Um, anybody can do it if you sit down and just try. Like I was at work today, I had nothing to do, so I started trying to figure out how this worked and I just, I, I wrote down on, on paper, shifting in 15, and I figured, I think I could build this in lo logic. So here you go, any, any, anybody can do it if, you, if you're willing to try. And uh, hope you guys like and uh, I'll see you next time.